Good morning, Calvary. Uh, this is Pastor Chad with your word for the day. And today we're beginning uh, Mark chapter 11. And we're moving into the, the beginning of the end of Jesus' ministry. Uh, this is a passage that deals with what is called the triumphal entry. It's the beginning of Holy Week. It's when Jesus entered Jerusalem the week that he uh, was betrayed, arrested, uh, condemned, crucified, and rose from the dead. So this is often what's called Holy Week. And this is the the part that, that starts this whole uh, experience. The, the Gospels are consumed with Jesus' death and resurrection. That's why they make up about a third of each of the Gospels. So, um, the, so as we look at this, it is a beautiful picture. Now, I encourage you to read it. It's uh, Mark 11, 1 through 11. I'm not going to read it all right now. But basically, Jesus sends his disciples to go get a, a donkey, uh, and actually the cult of a donkey, and, and to bring that to him as the animal that he enters Jerusalem on. And, and uh, he's arranged this. They go, and they get the donkey, and they bring it to Jesus. And, and then Jesus gets on the donkey and rides into Jerusalem. And as he's coming down the, the hill and up the hill, uh, crowds gather, and they lay their cloaks in the road. They wave palm branches, and they sing, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it's a beautiful picture because Jesus entered Jerusalem as a king, but not as the king that they wanted. See, a, a king could enter the, the city one of two ways. If he came as a conqueror, he would enter on a horse. But if he came in peace, he would enter on a donkey. And here's Jesus riding on a donkey. You see, they, they wanted Jesus to be Messiah, who is the conquering king. They wanted him to lead a rebellion against uh, the Roman government and free Jerusalem from the oppression and establish the kingdom of David and, and make it a political entity. And that's not how Jesus came. Even though they wanted a conqueror, Jesus came to conquer sin and death and hell, not the Romans. He came to set us free spiritually, not politically. He came to give us new life, not just an improved life. And so today, as we look at this uh, passage, this triumphal entry, as we think back on that day when people uh, surrounded Jesus and cried out with praise and, and his followers were rebuked and, and Jesus said, hey, in, in the Gospel of Luke, if they don't praise me, even the rocks themselves will cry out. I want to just challenge you to do this. Remember to praise your Messiah. Remember to praise your Savior. I mean, the world may be a mess. You may not feel good. You might be afraid. The wrong people might be in power. The economy might be tanking. All these things are maybes, but here's the reality. We serve a Savior who conquers through love and sacrifice. Let me say that again. The world might be a mess, but we serve a Savior who conquers through love and sacrifice, and he's already won the battle. He's already completed our uh, victory. And, and so we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be dismayed. We don't have to be in despair. We just simply have to follow our king. And, and we follow him by being people of love and kindness and sacrifice and service. And let's keep praising Jesus with every breath that God gives us until the day we see him face to face. He deserved it then. He deserves it now, and he will deserve it for all eternity. Let's praise Jesus. Have a great day, and God bless.